this guy, <clears throat> this guy just friended me on Facebook. I don't know how he found me. Um, just guessing, he probably found me on YouTube. That's where I got the biggest audience. That's where the most people find me. They find me on YouTube, so I'm guessing he found me on YouTube. But um, he tried to friend me on Facebook, and so I sent him a message, which I generally do before I just accept people's friendship on Facebook because I don't want to have people on my Facebook that are going to hack into my computer. And generally, if they're going to hack into my computer, then they're not going to send me a message. Some of them do. Some of them that are going to hack into my computer through Facebook, they'll send me a message. But most of them that are going to try to hack into my computer, they don't. Uh, I'm saying this because I've experienced it, that uh, for a little while there, there was like a, a bunch of people, one right after the other, that they sent me a message, or they sent me a friend request. I accepted them as my friend. They started sending me messages, and then, like, as soon as they started sending me messages, there was, uh, I don't know, my, my browser was being hacked, that it was being indicated by my antivirus software and so I just closed the browser I deleted them from my Facebook friends and then the next time I was uh, or then I went for a long while without having anybody try to hack into my computer and then you know, a little while later I got a, a message apparently from another hoax uh, another hoax account on on Facebook and I accept the friendship and then they start sending me messages and immediately my my antivirus software so this happened a couple times that um, that people they were, they were sending me friend requests then as soon as they start chatting with me so I guess what they're doing is they're using Facebook's friend facility to uh, to hack their way onto people's computers so that's why it is that when I get a friend request, I don't just immediately accept it. I send them a message first, and if they respond, and you know they, um, you know they seem like a real person, then you know they they like share an interest and whatever. I'll you know I'll definitely friend them. But um, I don't know. So started out kind of big with like a lot of info on this friend request, which uh, most of it pertained to like cleansing nuke meltdown out of your system. And uh, I went into a lot, pretty much everything, about how to be immortal. And so, figured uh, it's been a long time that I've been thinking I should do this video. And I, I figured I would do this video now. And, uh, you know, now that I typed it all out, I was thinking it was going to be a lot more complicated than it turns out to have been what I put into this, uh, to this message. But... Um, I don't know, then I had some considerations in the midst of creating this message and I realized you know how very simple it is you know this is like um, I don't know it's probably like a five-step process there's like 20 things you gotta learn and then you know it'll be real tough to put death on you, you know, like the earlier you learn all this stuff in life like the the better chance you have of applying it towards securing yourself in this existence and uh, like the later in life you go without knowing most of this stuff or any of this stuff it's so like the the more likely it is that you'll be destroyed before you know before you have any chance to get to learn this stuff anyhow uh, here it is uh, this is my message to Justin Langvin L-A-N-G-E-V-I-N Langevin Langvin Maybe that's Langevin Justin Langevin? Yeah, that sounds right. Um, so, I started out... Oh, I went to his... Um, I went to his profile and he was complaining that he sneezed and he threw his back out of whack, that he injured his back by sneezing. So, uh, I sent him this message saying you sneeze your back out of whack? Dang, dude, that sounds rough. I'm wondering if what you did is shook the nuke toxins in your body around under pressure so they tore through more tissue. You know there's a nuke meltdown that's been raging for about three years now, right? Fukushima nuclear meltdown. You know, if you've been following my videos, I'm sure you know. 
Uh, all that nuke tox is in the food, especially meat and veggies with a large surface area like broccoli and cauliflower. You should eat thick veggies like eggplant and zucchini and oranges and skinned apples. The nuke fallout is raining down constantly and over the U.S. as an average it's about 200 counts per minute. Higher on the west coast than the east, but still very bad on the east coast. You can check the level of your nuke exposure at NETC.com, that's a, a nuclear emergency tracking center. They have a lot of lying, dysfunctional nuke meters on that map, so don't trust any of them that are reading under 70 CPM, 70 counts per minute, nuclear radiation. That's the federal empire hosting dysfunctional nuke meters to throw people off, make them think the air outside is breathable. It's not. The air is devastating nuke talks right now, globally. Anybody who is treating it like it's normal is going to be dead in the next decade. Lung cancer is about to spike. To cleanse the nuke toxins out of you, put a quarter teaspoon borax in a gallon of water, shake it up, drink it across three days or so. I just realized I didn't tell him to filter his water, but uh, that's highly important. You know, I'm gonna send him a message right after I get done making this video. Um, repeat, oh, you know what else is? You can filter your air, that will help out. You know, uh, spend most of your time indoors, filthy air, if you're going to work out, which uh, I actually don't recommend working out because you're like jostling your bones. When you bang your bones, that you're like banging your bones into your bones, then you're making micro fractures in the bones. And so whatever nuke tox might be circulating through your bloodstream is going to be getting lodged in your bones into the micro fractures. It's going to become part of you and then it's going to be there radiating your tissue for a long time so you know as much as you can work out right now you know if like it's absolutely critical to you to be in shape like you know if somebody's trying to beat you up on a daily basis or something like that you know i say just stay in your house but um you know because they're gonna be dead in a little while anyhow but um you know the you know the um yeah there's there's a solution for it you know, which is um, that you don't work out. So you, you don't even get those micro fractures. You don't get cesium and uh, radioactive iodine and uh, radioactive plutonium or uranium. You don't get those lodged in your bone <clears throat> in the micro fractures as your blood is circulating past them. Uh, uh, in a gallon of water, shake it up, or, okay, where am I on this, um, yeah, put a quarter teaspoon borax in a gallon of water, shake it up, drink it across three days or so, repeat one time per week until your head feels clear again, to slough off the cancerous tissue that was formed by your exposure to the nuke tox by 8% food grade hydrogen peroxide, eBay has good prices, Put a cap in a gallon of water and drink that on the days of the week. You're not drinking your borax water. I should say this about the borax water that uh, if you're like, if your head is heavy with a lot of nuclear toxins and that borax is pulling them all out of your system all at one time, then it's going to be busting up your tissues on the way. And so you might get a headache to be drinking even just a tiny little bit of borax so you know, if you're getting headaches you just cut back the the dosage you know make it less than it was that you did that gave you a headache and you know you should be able to do that um you know, cut it in half so instead of a quarter teaspoon make it an eighth of a teaspoon you know uh if an eighth of a teaspoon is giving you a headache in a gallon of water across three days you know, which it shouldn't be, but, you know, they make it a sixteenth of a teaspoon. You know, um, you might have to go for longer. That, like, you, if you have to do it at, like, a sixteenth of a teaspoon, it might take you, like, some months to get your head clean. You know, that your head feels light again, that you're clear of all that nuke tox. Anyhow, uh, returning to this, to re uh, yeah, let me see, I was just talking about the hydrogen peroxide, food grade hydrogen peroxide, one cap of it in a gallon of water, and I'm on to, to, reju uh, to rejuvenate your tissues, bust a nut, <laughs> put a 
bust a nut three times per day to keep the swimmers in your sack small. Newer equals smaller. Higher density of newer swimmers means they can find ways out of your sack into your bloodstream. Sperm are stem cells. They can become any cell in your body. In your bloodstream, they travel your whole body and become any tissue where they might lodge. So if you clear your sack daily, getting it on with your girlfriend or tossing off, whatever it takes, then you restore your youth, which is in actuality one of the keys to immortality. It's one of the, uh, one of the medical keys to immortality. It's part of the medical solution. The other medical keys are you have to detox and destroy any life form that's a parasite on your system. The detox, that, uh, that borax treatment, that should get the metals out of your body. Those, uh, those are like the primary detoxers. Uh, all that water will get like any type of uh, water soluble chemistry out of your body. You know what, I didn't include like a, an oil detox. I forgot to mention that, that uh, you, you like consume uh, ozonated olive oil like a, a quarter pint or something like that once a week for three weeks something like that and um, I don't know there's even like toxic oils and toxic sludge that might be in your body and you can clear that stuff with like a drop of uh, Bronner's hemp soap to a gallon of water do that like once a week for like three weeks or something like that forgot to make mention of those to him in this about the the detox so you gotta get like the water soluble the the oil and um the oil soluble and the oil toxins out of your body and you gotta get the metals out of your body it's a process called chelation if you want to do some more research on it which um, can be done by like EDTA or if you want to do it totally natural then you would do it with like uh, apple pectin you can eat like the inside of the rinds of oranges like that white tissue that's all pectin and Organosulfur, so like onions or garlic salt, turmeric is real good for getting metals out of your body, metals that you know should not be in your body. Stuff like mercury, stuff like uh, you know, uranium and plutonium and lead, all that stuff. You got to get it out of your body. You know, otherwise, you know you will build up and build up a higher and higher amount of it, and it will kill you. You know, it'll make your glands not function very well. It'll make your brain not function very well. And eventually, you know, by uh, under those stresses that your glands aren't producing the appropriate, uh, the appropriate hormones and uh, just like the, the liquids, the juices that your, uh, you know, very healthy, uh, a very healthy body will produce in order to uh, perform certain functions like the, the thyroid produces growth hormone when you have adequate iodine and manganese. Manganese being uh, rich in nuts. So like uh, peanuts are growing in the ground, so I don't recommend peanuts so much right now because of this nuke fallout. But um, like a tree nut with a shell, you know, the, whatever type of tree nut with a shell you might consume, that would be a lot better than peanuts. And, uh, yeah, returning to this. The other medical keys are you have to detox and destroy any life form that's a parasite on your system. That's done by Parasite Cleanse, which you can get at onelifeusa.com. They have the best prices I've seen on Parasite Cleanse, which is three herbs, wormwood, black walnut hull, both of which kill a wide range of worm parasites, and clove, which dissolves their eggs so you don't get reinfected after you killed all the adult parasites in your system. You probably also need to cleanse Candida, which 99% of people are infected with globally. You can do that by drinking grapefruit juice daily through that, or though that will take a long while. 
but you can speed it up by adding a bit of grape, grapefruit seed extract to your grapefruit juice carton. The viruses and bacteria are all prone to being exploded by food grade hydrogen peroxide, clearing a bunch of toxins all at once with H2O2, uh, hydrogen peroxide, can make you feel a bit queasy, but once you get through that, hydrogen peroxide will actually give you an oxygen high, sharpen your intellect, sharpen your vision, and put some pep in your step, all without any ill feeling. You want to be careful with all these recommendations. Don't exceed the recommended dosage because at high doses, some of this stuff is toxic, upwards of deadly. But at the recommended dose, uh, at the recommended dosage, it's therapeutic and certainly beneficial. So that's pretty much all the medical protocols necessary to secure immortality. Beyond that, you have to be well with society. Treat people fairly. Be decent. Fail in that, and you'll lose support of people who might have interrupted plots against you and you might piss some people off bad enough to want to kill you. For example, these murderous clowns in the federal empire, the murderous swine, the swine who don't care that their buddies are murderers, and so on. Don't align with these dirty people because they've already been set up to destruction and they're just gonna drag you down with them if you promote their murderous cause in the least. Beyond that, learn self-defense and survival techniques, stuff like striking, grappling, blade combat, gun combat, fitness, qualifying wild foods, building shelter from wild fixings, make, prep uh, make preparations to facilitate all those skills, stuff like buy a gun, bullets, body armor, machete, entrenching tools, sandbags, tarps, compass, survival knife, flint, study the most basic way to build fire, blowing on cupped kindling under an ember from the platform of an Egyptian bow drill. Don't use standard bow drill technique as it's too much friction on your line. Egyptian bow drill technique is by far superior. Do and learn all that, and the murderous chiefs will find it a real challenge to mount and destroy you. How'd you find me, anyhow? Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, beyond just not making enemies, which I mentioned up there, you know, you gotta make a bunch of friends. Like, I just shared all this with him. What he would best do to make a bunch of friends is to share this with as many people as he can. That, you know, he just tell everybody how it is that you go about being immortal and you know then um, especially as time passes and lots of people succeed with you know this immortality challenge the influence of of all his friends will become more and more you know all these people who you know he did well by by sharing with them you know how it is that you go about securing yourself and you know, securing your life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's that's what he would best do. It's like the absolute most important thing he could do toward securing his own immortality. And what a lot of people do, though, what they fail in is instead of, like, go research this knowledge, realize that everything that I've stated here is an absolute fact, recognize how important it all is and recognize that they can save themselves from death with this instead of do that they just accept whatever it is that you know the federal empire comes at them with as a deal to screw me over you know because people are so stupid they want money rather than like to be here in a thousand years that you know they um You know, as, as it is, like, the deal that they're taking is no kind of great deal. You know, they're going to, like, uh, you know, f most of the people that that have, like, tried to destroy me, messed with me, you know, based on the federal empire, giving them whatever it, whatever it took, they probably only got a couple hundred dollars. You know, it's probably, like, an average of, like, a thousand dollars or something. I'm sure that there was, like, some uh, high-priced people in there that, you know, went messing with me, like my landlord right now. You know, um, this guy that he's working in uh, conjunction with Stanger, the owner of Jay Peak. Um, you know, he tried to murder me the first season I was here. First season I lived in Newport, Vermont. I was going up to Jay Peak on like a regular basis, and there was every time I went up there, there was an unmarked trail that was a deadly hazard. And, um,. I don't know, I was able to to avoid it all, just like, you know, barely by uh, by the the uh, skin of my teeth. And, you know, they, um, 
they persisted in it through the whole season. And like my favorite trail, I witnessed uh, somebody, uh, you know, I noticed one day that there was like poor conditions on this trail at like the bottom of the hill. They had like waxed a rail and somebody broke their arm. I don't know, I like, uh, I seen him go down. I was actually, I was right there. I witnessed him fall and break. Like I heard it crack. And um, then he was laying there on the snow and then the snow patrol responded to him. And then, or a ski patrol responded to him. And uh, they, the word went out on the mountain that a you know, guy had broken his arm that day. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's like, um, all this treachery that was aimed at me by this guy Stenger, you know, that every of 12 times I went to his mountain, there was a trail that was, that was deadly wrecked and it was unmarked. Normally what they would do, you know, being, uh, if they were a responsible, uh, you know, responsible ski slope, is if there was like a sheet of ice down a hill with absolutely no, uh, no powder covered on it, that um, it was like a sheer face that, you know, it's like, um, what would that be like, uh, from, from noontime, be like a hundred and, you know, nearly 180 degrees, like 170 degrees or something. So it's like almost straight downhill, you know, it's like, uh, nearly a cliff. And, um, you know, they, uh, instead of mark these icy trails, they would leave the icy trails open and so, you know, you, you go over like the ridge of a hill and then you see that you're coming up on ice and it's impossible for you to avoid going right across it. And then, you know, you just try to get your board as flat as possible. And, you know, you know that you're coming out the other side with like a ridiculous amount of speed and that you're going to be heading into the woods. And so, um, I don't know that like if you have time to before you go across this ice sheet, then you might throw yourself on the ground instead of go across the ice sheet and hope that you can steer away from the woods before you get there, you know, but, um, they, there might be some hope to, like, do a fall on the other side of the ice sheet, and, uh, you know, you can fall right on the ice sheet, too, you know, although that's, like, if you're not real strong, you might injure yourself that way, and so, um, I don't know, if you do fall on the ice sheet, you want to get your board downhill so that you can break as soon as you get, um, or, uh, as soon as you get to the other end of the ice sheet and then if you fall face first that you're face first going downhill you still want to use your board to break like you want to try to dig your feet into the ground as best you can yeah I'm, I'm talking about snowboarding obviously not skiing but um you know like the the one thing you absolutely do not want to do is to go launch in, into the woods after you fly off an ice sheet and smash into a tree but um, people kill themselves. They kill themselves skiing and snowboarding like every year. And, you know, they were setting up these deadly conditions. You know, they got all kinds of snow making equipment up there. They could have powdered those areas. But rather than do that, and rather than mark them off, they would leave them open and not bother to powder them. <clears throat> Yeah, so, uh, Stenger, in my estimation, he made many attempts on my life the first season I was here. He even gave me a real good deal. He gave me half off for being a veteran. You know, and then he tried to kill me. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I don't know, what was I even saying? Oh, yeah, I was talking about, like, people that were, um... You know, they they like attempting to murder people. Yeah, so I remembered. I remembered what it was that I was gonna say uh, about the whole Stanger situation, which is that um, I don't know. He has promised to this community eight hundred and sixty-five million dollars that is to be spent in the Northeast Kingdom toward revitalization. That they're gonna make this place alive again, and. Um, yeah, you know that's uh, that's a whole other lesson. You know how to um, how to restore life to dead beings.
it's possible. You know what they're up to now is like a day to two days that like if you put a person on ice immediately after they die, then like they'll still be uh, you know viably restored within two days. That's like I don't know the uh, uh, that's not like the emperor's. The real emperors, you know, um, it, it's my belief that there's somebody above the Rothschilds, even though they seem to be the banking emperors, and they got their hands in all the militant uh, treachery, and uh, you know, of course they got their hands in the political treachery, being you know the banker chiefs. You know, they, uh, to like anybody who doesn't understand that the situation is a lot older than thousands of years, they would seem to be. You know, the very top dominant but to me recognizing that like, this situation might have gone on for hundreds of millions of years uh, you know there's like what is it called OOP art out of place artifacts oop art and uh, there's like uh, like screws that were discovered in uh, they were embedded in coal that was some hundreds of millions of years old. It was like um, a hammer, like a very well distinguishable hammer that was embedded in uh, some uh, fossilized stone. And uh, I don't know, there's like a bunch of different out of place artifacts that like things that do not fit with the era that corresponds to the place where they were dug out of the ground. So. Uh, let me think. There's like some human footprints. There's a giant human footprint. Another out of place artifact. I think the oldest of them, though, is about 600 million years old. And, uh, you know, I can see how there might have been like some human treachery on this planet for 600 million years. You know, giants or, you know, whatever. Maybe they're, they're coming and going as, um, I don't know, the, uh, as their solar system arrives on its closest approach to Earth, you know, uh, probably the, the solar system of Sirius, the stars, uh, the star system Sirius, which is three stars. Anyhow, yeah, there's um, there's these people that are apparently you know, uh, high-level millionaires and billionaires that I've been pissing off with all my publishing against the banksterism, against the military-industrial complex against this U.S. federal empire government, and, um, I don't know, so, you know, they're obviously motivated to destroy me, and, uh, I don't know, there's, like, these local millionaires that, you know, they, uh, they've been setting up these treacherous conditions, like Bill Stanger on his, uh, on his ski mountain, and, um, I don't know, then, um, my landlord over here, uh, you know, there's, Bill Stanger, he's trying to buy this building from my landlord, and my landlord has been torturing me too. That uh, my landlord, he like rained sewage into my apartment a bunch of times, and I kept on calling over there, telling them that like you know the people upstairs they um, you know they flooded my apartment, and the guy would come over and he was like, uh, just so you know, this is sewage that like you know this was the overflow from the toilet. I was like, what in the hell? And they had done it a bunch of times, and it wasn't until that last time that he told me that it was sewage. Anyhow, yeah, so, um, I don't know, I, you know, I always use bleach when I clean the floor, anyhow, but, um, yeah, just the, the point remains that, you know, they, like, you know, obviously flushing biological toxins into my place, and I was calling over to the, uh, to the landlord's office, and I'm complaining about it. And, uh, like the second and third time that it happened, I made requests that they fix the floor upstairs. 
you know, don't just come over here and tell the people not to overflow the toilet. Instead of do that, go up there and tell these people that you'll be back the next day to fix the floor so that the sewage can't just rain down into my apartment. Because there's apparently a hole in the floor upstairs, a hole through my ceiling, and the, you know, the water that they would flood onto the floor would just rain right down here. So it's biological toxin. You know, whatever it was that was uh, in that guy's poo-poo, you know, or in their toilet bowl, you know, it's getting rained into my apartment. You know, so he made uh, those attempts on me. He, uh, he shut off the heat here for three years in a row. And, like, I would fight him on it until, like, the spring. And then he would finally turn the heat back on. And then I would have the heat, you know, so that, like, if the summer nights get cold, I'd be able to put the heater on. And uh, they have been kind of cold. They've been real cold uh, in recent years. They're down to, like, 40 degrees or something because we're going into an ice age. Anyhow, you know, the, um, he would leave it on until, like, November, and then, like, as soon as it started getting cold, then he would shut the gas off to the gas heater. And, like, this place has a boiler heater, but the boiler heater doesn't heat this place at all. It's, like, freezing in here if you depend only on the boiler heater. So, yeah, I don't know, he, he, like, he's been torturing me, and... I think he thinks that if he tortures me enough, you know, if I'm over here, like, you know, stewing, angry, um, you know, like, disgusted with my landlord, uh, you know, disgusted with the conditions that he has put my apartment in, such as, um, you know, I'll, um, I'll get pictures of that in a minute. They came over here, they came over here one day and they blew up my hallway that like I called them and told them because uh, they like there's nobody left in this building except for me because the guy's trying to sell it and Spates refused to respect my uh, my rental agreement that I just want my rental agreement transferred to another building but he refuses uh, you know he wants to break his rental agreement with me and he says he'll put me in another building but he wants to charge me more and, you know, he wants to destroy this rental agreement, which I have, which is indefinite. He didn't, uh, he didn't set any expiration in my rental agreement. Yeah, so... Hey, uh, yeah, so I, I figure uh, what he's doing, you know, all these little tortures for... Is that, um... You know, he's like... He's trying to get me to kill myself. I've seen this with a lot of people. That they're like, you know, they'll do the just like years and years of these bitty little tortures on me. That like, they're trying to make my life miserable. You know, they, um, I'm, I'm not at all prone to suicide, you know, and apparently like nobody has explained that to them. You know, they, um, you know, what they're doing though, what they're really doing is they're setting themselves up to death because like, instead of, you know, me share with them the solutions to their problems, you know, I'm just not even going to communicate with them. And so, you know, ultimately, they're going to fall prey to something. And, you know, most people, it's going to be to, like, eat and meat. That because they chose to not be personable with me, they're going to continue eating meat. And they're going to build up, you know, the, um, fat 
animal fat is solid at human temperature. And so if you eat meat, you build up fat because it, it can't find its way out of your body and just stay as a solid in your bloodstream. And so, you know, that's, uh, that's what will happen to most people that decide not to, you know, not to try to be cool with me. Instead, they try to piss me off for years at a time or something. You know, and I'll even give them hints or whatever. I'll be like, you eat dead things, right? You know, you're trying to piss me off, but you eat dead things. And so, you know, how do you think life is going to go for you? I don't know, but, um, yeah, so, uh, there's a bunch of people, there's a bunch of people in my past that have done this to me, that they suffer me years of minor abuses, trying to, like, you know, build up, you know, my level of, like, depression or something, and, um, I'm not real prone to depression either, like, I don't get depressed, I don't know, like, I stay busy, I stay active, like, I, you know, I do this publishing effort, um, I don't know, like in recent months, because I'm trying not to do a bunch of physical fitness, I've been doing like chess or I was on this game Plarium until they just booted me today. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's like, I like, I check my Facebook, I repost a lot of the stuff that I find on there, all the stuff that I agree with. You know, uh, my friends on Facebook, they like, they make a bunch of posts, especially political stuff I tend to repost. But, um, yeah, so, um, I don't know, I stay busy. I stay mentally active. If, like, I think of something that, like, I might need to understand, then I do some research on it in order to be able to figure it out. You know, stuff like how to alkalize water, how to ozonate water, how to ozonate oil, how to... Uh, how to like liberate hydrogen fuel from salt water and um, I don't know like how to how to form like a little uh, blowtorch a little hydrogen blowtorch to be able to do some welding with hydrogen um, I don't know like uh, one of my older research projects I studied how to qualify wild foods which is real easy first you like uh, some some food that you find in the wild, you take it, like you, uh, you know, if you're gonna eat the leaves and you take a leaf and you rub it on, you know, whatever part of the plant you're gonna, you, you do this test with it. You rub it on your wrist, you know, the, the naked part of your wrist. And then you wait 20 minutes. And if it doesn't give you a rash, then you rub it on your lips then you wait 20 minutes, and if it doesn't give you a rash on your lips, then you take the tiniest little piece of it, and you chew it off, and you chew it up a little bit in your mouth, and then you spit it out, and then you wait 20 minutes, and then if it didn't give your mouth any type of ailing condition, you take a, another similarly small piece of it, and you chew it up, and you swallow it, and then you wait 24 hours. And if it doesn't give you like any type of indigestion or like you know uh, ailing condition, then you have qualified a wild food. You can eat that. And uh, so, what you might do is you know if you're trekking through the woods, then like when you come to something that you know you're going to test it, you know you see a bunch of it there. You don't know if you're going to come across it again in your trek. You gather it all up. You know, you gather whatever it is that you want to carry with you. And then, you know, the next day, after the 24 hours, you'll know whether it's a food or not. You know, and um, the more you get to learn the wild foods around the area that you're in, the more you just, you know, you'll be able to just eat the wilderness. Although right now, you know, I, I really wouldn't trust it unless you know that you got like... You know, the borax and um, the, the food-grade hydrogen peroxide to do the cleanse. You know, get the new contamination out of your system. Because all of this stuff, the whole planet is getting nuclear fallout. You know, all that cesium. So, yeah, there's all that. You know, you just, uh... Yeah, you just do your best. Do your best to be decent to people and um, learn how to defend yourself because 
you know, while you're being decent to people, people are gonna be, like, they're gonna be challenging you, them being scumbags, and, you know, they're like, you know, they, they're living these treacherous lives, locking people in cages for having a plant, and, um, you know, whatever else it is that they're doing, you know, they um, like, <clears throat> the swine, the court system, the politicians, you know, all those people, they're gonna be trying to destroy you because they're so scummy. And, uh, I don't know, so, you know, they, they'll be, like, sending you biological warfare, they'll be, like, sending you, uh, uh, toxins, like, this building I'm living in is rich with, um, what's it called? I want to say arsenic, but I know that's not it. Uh, asbestos is another A word. Yeah, asbestos. They got, um, I don't know what it is. I'm guessing that it's like the tiles on the outside of the building and maybe the tiles on the floor out here. And probably the worst of it is the insulation in the walls because I seen uh, inside this wall over here what looks to be asbestos insta uh, insulation. It's like really, really old. It's like gray and it's just um, like if you touch it, it just falls apart. So like even with the wind passing it, it's